Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about acupressure to reduce heart rate. Now any kind of abnormal rhythm in the heart is called an arrhythmia. This may be a fast rate called tachycardia or a slow rate called bradycardia or another irregular rhythm. Most arrhythmias are fairly benign but some can be serious or even life-threatening. During an arrhythmia, the heart may not be pumping enough blood to the body, causing a lack of blood flow to the brain, heart, and other organs. So it's pretty serious, so always check with your doctor. The great news is that acupressure can normalize your heart rate. The acupressure that I'm talking about is coming from acupuncture, based in traditional Chinese medicine, as I am an acupuncturist by trade. Now, if you go and see a qualified acupuncturist, they will often read your pulse, which is the radial pulse at your wrist on both sides. The pulse diagnosis is like the MRI in Western medicine. We can really find out a lot because pulse reading is very developed in Oriental medicine. The length of the pulse, so how long or how short, the texture of the pulse, so whether it's a soft pulse or a wiry pulse, a slippery pulse, as well as the strength of the pulse and the shape. And all these combinations of factors together add up to 29 pulse qualities. From an oriental medicine perspective, a fast pulse often means there is excessive heat in the body. And this often shows up when, apart from recent exercise, there is a fever, an inflammatory issue, or when the nervous system is affected by high stress. A pulse that's slow means there is a cold condition in the body, or it can reveal that one of the body's systems is under-functioning, it's sluggish, and that this may coincide with poor blood circulation, cold hands and feet, etc. Now, acupressure is an excellent way to get relief from symptoms such as racing heart, dizziness, heart palpitations, tightness in the chest, fatigue, and shortness of breath. And this is backed by many scientific studies showing relief from these ailments using acupuncture on the same points. With acupressure or acupuncture, we are treating the root cause by treating the root and the symptoms, which are like the branches, these symptoms will naturally start to resolve. So what is the root cause of rapid heart rate? The patterns in traditional Chinese medicine that lead to rapid heart rate include heart qi deficiency, so heart energy is weak, heart yin deficiency, heart blood and spleen qi deficiency, heart and gallbladder deficiency, phlegm heat, spleen and kidney yang deficiency, and blood stagnation. Now, a comprehensive treatment with an acupuncturist will be able to diagnose which pattern applies to you. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to cover a few basic acupressure treatments that can benefit all these patterns. In an independent study published by the Healthcare Medicine Institute in 2017, showed the efficacy of three specific acupuncture points in regulating the heart rhythm. They compared one group who received acupuncture on these three points and a control group who received a drug therapy, which was injections of amiodarone for arrhythmia. It was found that the group receiving acupuncture had a greater effectiveness at 85%, while the drug group had a 67.5 total effectiveness rate. It was also found that the conversion time to the healthy rhythm was faster with the acupuncture group taking only 39 minutes while the drug group took 50 minutes. So let's go through how to find these acupressure points and how to treat them. We're going to start by looking at heart seven. So heart seven is found on the inside of the wrist. So just underneath the pisiform bone, moving to the inside of the tendon called flexor carpi ulnaris, and just under this line here, which is the wrist crease. 
So in this spot, you should be feeling a depression, kind of like a little valley. And this is where you're going to press into. So now that you've hopefully found heart seven, we're just going to, we're just going to work this point here together. I'll be working on it. You're going to work on it. We'll do it together while I'm talking about the functions and the meaning of this point. The functions of heart seven are to calm the Shen. The Shen is the subtle aspect of the spirit of the heart. It tonifies and regulates the blood and energy of the heart. On the mental and spiritual side of things, when the heart channel is strong and balanced, it provides us with the warmth of the fire element. The heart belongs to the fire element. So this can feel like you know, being cozy in front of a warm fireplace on a dreary, cold day. Or it can feel like, you know, when we receive thoughtful words spoken to us, you know, that really, that really warms our heart, you know, when we might have been feeling alone or in some kind of despair. And, 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 and then we feel cheered up afterwards. It can be that kind of feeling. By working with this point, we help our heart to feel at home, which means a natural feeling of quietude, of peace and rest within ourselves, as opposed to, you know, if this area gets weak, we can get this feeling of restlessness, like we're not really at ease, we're not really accessing our heart energy, or the joy and the fun that comes from having an open heart. And when this area is blocked, it can lead us on sort of an endless quest, a a search to, you know, a hunger for that joy that we can't find within. And so we're searching externally. And this can come up in the form of addictions or, you know, overeating, which is another kind of addiction, you know, or just trying so hard, you know, maybe just filling our life up with so much activity that isn't really all that meaningful, you know, just trying to find that joy outside of ourselves rather than on the inside. When, when this energy is um, sealed off, you know, it's like our heart is kind of closed. And we can see this can show up as a person who's trying too hard to control everything, being like a like a dictator or a bully, you know, and then, and then they kind of lose their energy in this whole process. So what I've been describing here is the spirit level of heart seven, as described by my great teacher and five element acupuncturist, Neil Gumenick. And so this shows us how all of the acupuncture points work on three levels on the physical level, physical symptoms that, you know, we can see from, you know, with, with our eyes or show up in, you know, an x-ray or under a microscope, something like that. They also treat the mental level, meaning our incorrect way of thinking about things or confusion or a mind that is cloudy. And then the Treatment also treats the spirit level, which is a deeper level having to do with finding wholeness in our sense of being here in our life, who we are, why we're here, and a sense that we're moving forward on our correct path. So the heart official, each of the 12 organ systems are called officials because they all have a job to do in governing various systems in the body. So the heart official is called the supreme controller. It's like the king, the monarch who rules over the kingdom of the body and mind in a spirit of love, using fairness and wisdom. Now, this idea of a supreme controller has to do with what this energy is, what, what is being mirrored in our heart channel. And, and what it can do for us, which is to help us connect with the divine. And I'm not really speaking about any particular religion or set of spiritual practices, but really an inner felt connection with something that is above and beyond us. 
It's only recently that scientists have discovered that the heart is not just something that pumps blood. It, it actually has its own intelligence. New research is showing that the heart controls the brain much more than was originally understood. The heart emits more electricity than the brain. The heart has an electrical field 60 times greater than the activity of the brain and an electromagnetic field 5,000 times what the brain has. So doesn't this go to show us why we all need to be paying attention to our heart, listening to what our heart is saying? Okay, now let's take a look at the next point, pericardium 6. We're going to find this point by looking at the inside of our wrist. So this is with the palm side up and we're finding the wrist crease here. That's the line separating our wrist and our hand. And then we're going to measure three fingers below that line on the arm. And here you're going to, you're going to be going between two tendons. So tendons feel like like hard wires, like they're not bones, but you know, they're kind of spongy basically. And some people have two tendons here, some people have three. So you're basically going in the middle of the forearm between the tendons of palmaris longus and flexor carpi radialis. The Journal of Traditional Chinese Medicine and Clinical Naturopathy published research in 2016, which revealed that stimulating pericardium 6 right here with acupuncture had a preventative effect for atrial fibrillation and that it brought the heart rhythm back to normal. They also proved that acupuncture prevents atrial fibrillation through revitalizing and rebuilding the right atrial appendage. So that's some of the Western data behind this point. Uh, so, so let's, you know, let's apply some pressure here. So going between these two tendons, three fingers down, and you can get fairly strong pressure to this area. And you can, you can just sort of massage in deeply in little circles for you know, a couple minutes on the left, a couple minutes on the right. And we'll just, we'll just do it here together as I'm speaking. So this is a point that we can access almost any time of the day. You know, it's just an easy point to find. We can do it while we're, you know, relaxing, standing in an elevator, maybe talking on the phone. Well, it depends what kind of phone. <laughs> you might need your speakerphone. The functions of this point are to open the chest, regulate the energy of the heart, calm the mind, it also harmonizes the stomach, and it's quite interesting because in women, heart attack symptoms often include stomach pain and nausea. So this pericardium 6 is a great point for heart troubles that are connected with stomach symptoms. Now, pericardium 6 is also very close to a group of points used in master tongue acupuncture, which are excellent for all types of heart issues. This set of points is called heart spirit. So, you know, we can do this. We can just, you know, we can just use several fingers here and going in between these two tendons and we can just work all three points together in a line, which is called in acupuncture, it's called a Dao Ma, which means a grouping of points along a channel where the result of working all the points together is more powerful than treating the individual points alone. So let's, let's continue working this here. A little bit of pressure. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about what is heart disease. Now, heart disease is basically a blockage in the flow of oxygen and nutrients to the heart. Now, this may be coming from plaque buildup in the arteries or vessels. Plaque gets deposited here when there is damage to the vessel walls. So then, of course, the question is, why are the vessel walls getting damaged? There are many causes. A lot of this has to do with oxidative damage coming from smoking, high cholesterol, high stress. 
And the good news is that we can impact our heart health by changing our daily habits. And I think many people, you know, have developed this awareness and, you know, knowing that, you know, eating better, getting more exercise, smoking less, drinking less. I think people are, you know, definitely making efforts in these areas. But reducing stress, I think, is a hard one for people. And this is where acupressure and acupuncture can really help. Acupuncture works to reduce stress and regulate the stress response. So it's not taking our stress away necessarily, but it's helping the body hit the reset button so that physiologically we go back to normal after stress. The nervous system under stress goes into a fight, flight, or freeze response, which means that our blood pressure goes up, our heart rate goes up, cortisol levels goes up, a whole cascade of stress reactions take place in the body, which it serves us if we're in sudden danger, but we can't live that way day after day and stay healthy. Over time, these small stressors have the sympathetic response working over time, and this starts to negatively affect our digestion, our sleep, our mood, and of course our heart. So we need to get ourselves out of fight, flight, or freeze and into parasympathetic mode. The parasympathetic nervous system is responsible for the functions that allow us to rest, digest, and heal. And acupuncture and acupressure do an amazing job of activating this response. So this is what helps bring our heart rate, blood pressure, and blood sugar levels back down to normal. By getting regular treatments, we can move our system back into balance and potentially reverse the negative effects of chronic stress, helping to prevent further harm like heart disease. Pericardium 6 is also called inner frontier gate. And this reflects the emotional aspect of this point, which is about how much we open or close our heart to various situations, mostly social situations in our life, our relationships, and not meaning necessarily romantic relationships, but all of our relationships with other people. Now, I know a lot of people have this idea, you know, maybe it's a spiritual idea that we're, we're meant to live with our hearts kind of flung open all the time. And, and yes, while I agree that, you know, spiritually we are meant to experience greater compassion, you know, eventually universal compassion, you know, the highest love we can have for all living beings. But we also need to be careful with our energy in the physical world that, you know, when we have a feeling of danger or feeling that something is not right about a situation that, you know, we, we need a certain level of discernment so that we can strike a balance between what is appropriate and healthy in a situation and what is not. And so this discernment is a, an awareness of the social vibe around us and it's brought to us by a healthy pericardium channel. So acupressure on pericardium 6 helps us to foster this awareness. Okay, now let's look at our third point, conception vessel 17. So we find this point on the sternum bone which is in the center of the chest. It's that big bone running down the midline where all the ribs are attaching to. Okay, so just locating that now. And then we're going to go to, well, in men, it's the level of the nipple. In women, well, we can see that's not always at that same level, but where we're going is four to the fourth intercostal space. So if we find up here at the collarbone, just under the collarbone, we're going to count that as one, our first intercostal space. So collarbone, then there, below that there's a dip, and then we're going to find the next bone, and then the next dip is the second intercostal space, and we're going to count three and then four. And so when we get to four, that is the level on the sternum where we're going to find conception vessel 17. 
Now, if you press into this space, you may find this area a little bit tender. So no worries, this is very normal. It often shows up tender in people who suffer from a little bit of anxiety. And well, in modern life, most of us have some anxiety over one thing or another. So with acupressure, you're either just going to sort of press around in small circles, or you can tap on it, whatever feels comfortable for you. I tend to feel tapping on this area is good because, well, it's located over a big bone and there's not really not much to press into. So, you know, you're just going gently here and just connecting with the feeling of the tapping at the sternum here. So let's all just tap here together. I'm going to tap along with you and tell you a little bit about conception vessel 17. So this is a point that opens the chest and it's also a crossing point of three main energy channels of the body, the lung, the heart, and the pericardium. It helps to reduce heart palpitations, clear phlegm and congestion from the chest. And it can also help to resolve anxiety or panic attacks. Conception vessel 17 is located in the region of the heart chakra. The heart chakra represents our ability to open up our heart and to, you know, to love others at, as, as much as we are able. It is a point where the Shen, which is the spirit of the heart, resides and where our heart feelings are felt. So the feeling of warmth coming from love and also the pain coming from heartache. Conception Vessel 17 is a point that basically wakes up the Shen, the subtle spirit of the heart, and helps the heart communicate feelings to, with, with the outside world. It helps to calm the spirit when a person has been, you know, depleted or perhaps betrayed in, in a relationship setting where the heart has maybe lost its spirit. It, it, it helps the heart protector to find new opportunities to uh, re-engage with others. The Healthcare Medicine Institute published research from 2011 showing that conception vessel 17 is an acupuncture point that has been shown to benefit the heart by increasing heart rate variability. So a low heart rate variability is linked with conditions such as myocardial infarction, heart attack, and congestive heart failure. Conception Vessel 17 accomplishes this by switching to the autonomic nervous system to regulate the heart rate by ramping up the vagal activity. Heart rate variability is the variation in time between heartbeats. What it measures is the body's ability to regulate the heart beat and rhythm through the vagus nerve. With this recent finding, researchers conclude that acupuncture may harmonize the two sides of the autonomic nervous system, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. Okay, so now you have some points to work with to lower your heart rate and bring your heart system into balance. So you can do acupressure several times a day if you like. And spend a few minutes at each point and working both sides. So I wish you all the best with your health and wellness, and I look forward to connecting with you in the next video. Thank you.